Yes, that is a snake in the background. She's just gonna crawl around and do her thing. Don't mind her. People are poor. 10% of the world's population lives in extreme poverty, but we're not here to talk about the world. I'm an American who only knows what goes on in her American bubble, so that's where we're gonna stay. Roughly 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. What this means is that more than half of the US working population is spending most, or all, of what they earn in a single paycheck until they get the next one. They probably also have debt, and whatever savings they do have probably isn't enough to live off of without another paycheck on the way. And so they're tethered to their job, forever trading their life force for money so that they can eat and sleep safely for another day. That's my nightmare and my reality. But why are we so poor? In our required education system, we're taught math, science, history, literature, physical education, square dancing, but not money. And I don't mean economics. Economics is basically philosophy with applied math. It teaches you the theory of money, but not really how to use it. It's not personal finance. So why don't we grow up learning how to use money? A lot of people rack up credit card debt by consistently buying things they don't need. Until my older sister taught me how credit works, I didn't know how I was gonna learn about credit. I think I thought I was just gonna wing it and hope for the best or use a debit card forever. I knew someone who racked up like $10,000 of credit card debt because they thought it was free money that could be used for traveling. When you get those letters in the mail from Capital Union or Credit One or whatever the fuck saying that you have X amount of money pre-approved for credit, it probably seems like you're being gifted free money. Well, you kind of are, but it's not free. It's borrowed money. Any credit you spend, you have to pay back in full with cash. You can pay credit card statements with other credit cards, but you'll just have to pay it all back with cash anyway. So obviously this is a problem in our country, and so why weren't we taught to be money smart? Most of us are money stupid, and even more of us are downright money retarded. So how do we stop? Well, the answer is obvious. Spend less and save more. But that's usually harder to do than it is to say it, unless you know where to start. I found this article, Eight Steps to Quit Living Paycheck to Paycheck, and I'm gonna go through it in this video because it gives some good actionable advice on how to save money, and also some of the stock photos they use are pretty funny. Like, was this a joke? Also look at this graphic. Money! With Stacey Johnson. Oh, so he's the, he's the big boy here. All right, okay, number one, know where your money goes. In other words, track your expenses. This is something I know I should do better, but I'm lazy. Fuck it, I'll do it now. We'll do it live. First, let's see what I spent this month so far. All right, so to break down my expenses for this month of August, 2022. Oh shit. So in total, I've spent $2,776.39 this month. And there are four more days left in the month from when I'm recording this. Now I'm gonna break down the costs. So the majority of my spending went towards my essentials, which includes rent, insurance, and my phone. I mean, a phone isn't really essential, but nowadays it kind of is. Uh, I spent nearly $500 on food, which is kind of in my budget. Like I'm trying not to spend more than $500 a month on food alone, but other than rent and insurance, that seems to be the majority of purchases I make is on food because I like to eat. $370 on medical expenses. So all these medical expenses are co-pays from when I went to go see a doctor or had a physical therapy session. It all just adds up, so. So that's really unique for this month because the rest of the year, I don't go see the doctor as much. About $180 on entertainment and shopping. I don't shop that much usually, but I wanted to get some things for my GoPro. And then $345 on auto slash travel expenses. So that includes gas and whatever maintenance I had to have done to my car or my motorcycle. In this case, I had a flat tire on my motorcycle, so I had to go get that taken care of because I don't know how to change a tire. I should probably learn. You guys, saving is hard. It seems like no matter how much I want to not spend money, life will just keep punching me in the face and I always have to pay for it. So back to the list. Two, make saving painless. I like this photo where it's like, oh, painful is an option. I'll take that. Grubhub makes it painful, but I actually do do what it says here. Every month I have $1,000 automatically withdrawn from my checking account into my Vanguard accounts, which is where I keep my retirement funds. By doing this, I'm guaranteeing myself at least $1,000 to go into mid and long-term savings, which is pretty good. Three, live on less than you earn. This is something that I think a lot of people struggle with. I blame consumerism. Just because you can afford to buy more expensive things as your income goes up, doesn't mean you always have to increase your level of spending in proportion to what you're earning. If you start to earn more money, like from a promotion or a bonus or a side hustle or a new job, put the extra income into your savings, not into your spending. Four, get comfortable saying no to the kids. 
I don't have kids, but I think in this scenario, I am the kids and I just have to say no to myself more. Like I know home cooked food is cheaper and healthier for me, but I'm the one cooking it and sometimes I'm lazy and I just want to order delivery. But it's time to stop. Five, cut your housing costs. This is basically an extension of number three. Don't buy more house than you can afford. In fact, buy less house than you can afford. Who needs a house anyway? If the roof caves in, the landlord's not gonna help you out. You are the landlord. Call your insurance company. Six, drive a used car or don't have a car at all. Or I recommend personally a motorcycle. You save on gas, it's cheaper and easier to maintain. And if you live in California or some of the other states that allow lane splitting, you can cut through traffic a lot more easily. But I know it's not for everyone. You're like, 38 times more likely to die than if you were driving a car. Seven, learn to cook. I know how to cook, but I also work a full-time job that drains my energy. The burnout is real. Some days I'm ordering pizza. And last on our list, forge an independent spirit. I think I have one. I like to figure things out on my own before I reach out to other people for help. But that's mostly because I don't like to bother other people and I don't want them to think that they can also bother me. Also, I don't like that I have to be dependent on my employer for money which is most of us, right? I mean, I'll probably always work for someone else to some capacity, but I don't want that to be my entire source of income. But for whatever reason, for most people, that's the status quo. You go to school, you go to college, you get a job, and then you die. Solely rely on someone else to get paid, and that's fucked. I wanna make passive income too. Why isn't that taught in school? Things like saving more and investing your money. Those are things I didn't learn in school. I just had to figure them out for myself. And luckily we have the internet that can tell us anything and everything all of the time. So through personal education on personal finance, I'm investing most of my savings and the dividends and returns I get on those investments are giving me passive income while I do nothing except pour more money into it and maybe purchase some stocks, ETFs, index funds, real estate, gold, silver, Bitcoin, if you're into that, basically anything. It would also be cool if I could make money for myself, but I don't know how to do that. I guess I need to read a book. All right, that's it for this video. Bye.